politicians spoke here. Uh, Frederick Douglass came here. Abraham Lincoln came here in the 18th, 1845, I think. These people traveled on a circuit, and Lowell was a place to come. And so exhibit. I spent, you know, I had several hundred rooms on one floor. Uh, depending on the it's spring day like today where the sun's coming up at five o'clock. She's already probably been up since four. Um, she's probably gone to the mill right at four, four thirty maybe as soon as it was daybreak. And she's probably put in about two hours of work um, by seven o'clock. 6.30, 7 o'clock, the bell would ring and she would come over, back over to her boarding house. She'd have 20 minutes to eat her breakfast. Um, then they would go back to the mill. Um, when you finish your meal at 7 o'clock, you get up from the table as a mill girl, you're done. You can go out and shop, you can go out and go to a lecture or, or a play that might be showing nearby. If you live on a farm, your day's still going on at 7 o'clock at night. You have to do the dishes. You have to clean up after your, your family eating. Um, a woman on a farm, her day doesn't end, and she doesn't get what you know, we think of as leisure time. So you know, one of the biggest sort of paradigm shifts for these women was the fact that they had time that was their own. And that's, you know, aside from the money that was now their own, they had time. And that was, that was for many of them, worth the price of, of you know, coming to the factories and working here. So after the cloth is woven, before it is sent out to the customer, uh, the cloth has to be inspected, and they were searching for uh, faults, and uh, they would grade cloth as firsts, or seconds, or thirds even. And sometimes if the cloth is being used for something that it didn't really matter if it was a broken end, or a slight mishap, it was maybe a cleaning cloth or something like that. But Generally, it was for a fashion or for shirting, for instance, you would want, you don't want any, any imperfections. In the, when we talk about uh, early mills, in the early days with the mill girls, or Yankee mill girls, or local girls, farm girls, uh, before the power, before we had mills like this, uh, under power making textiles, uh, the farm girls made them at home, and every farm practically had a loom. And you would make your own clothes. So these Yankee farm girls that came to work in this mill were very, uh, um, had all the perfect tools for, for weaving. Actually, it's much easier to run a power loom than it is a hand loom, of course. But they knew the basics because they would, they would do all the basic work themselves when they were weaving at home. And of course, they grew up watching their parents or other people weave. And, and in our culture today, women have a lot more opportunities to earn that money. 1820, 1830, 1840, the opportunities for women weren't that broad. But these mill girls came here and they lived in dorms, essentially. They lived in boarding houses with women just like themselves, um, sisters, you know, so that's a draw right there to have, you know, these, this, these friendships that form. Um, to earn the money, and, and in many cases, the parents were saying, yeah, sure, go, and for every couple of dollars you, s you keep for yourself, you need to send us a dollar home. And so many of the girls did that, um, part partly for themselves, but also for families, um, to send a brother to college, um, later to send themselves to college. It was, um, it was required by the mills that the women attend church, and that was a condition that, you know, initially when, when a recruiter would go out to a small town, and, and like Newton, he would go out there and he would say, you know, send your daughters to work in the mills. And the farmers would be like, yeah, I 
think so. And it's like, well, we'll provide a house for them. They'll earn cash money. They can send you money home. And we'll make them attend church. And, and those three things were kind of the, the big three that were incentives for parents to know that they could trust their children to this corporation. Um, because the corporation is now kind of standing in for the father. It will be a small office. And later on, they built their office up so you can look out and see the whole weekend. And then they would build it eventually in the center of the room, almost like an air traffic controller where you could look down and see the, the, the rooms. You know. That she'd be fired. As simple as that, they wouldn't tolerate it. As soon as it would be found out, she would be let go. The, the, the corporations had very strict rules about moral character. And however we might feel today about a, a woman getting pregnant when she's not married, 1840, that was just no, no, no. Um, and so she would have been dismissed and, and pretty much left to her own, you know, to figure out her life. I mean, she wouldn't have gotten any you know, unemployment or anything like that. We would have been on her own. Would Not that the shuttle is, is pointed now. If it hits you in the head, or they're, they're moving pretty rapidly, so yeah, it could be uh, dangerous. Because they're pretty heavy and they're very pointed and hard and they're made of hard wood. And the tips are metal, and they're sharp, and you have to be quite a weapon. Uh, oh, it hit the mark. Oh, God. Over here.